feel that you know how special you are to be part of this new day for our Heavenly Father who loves us so much that He spared us to the night. We slept like woods, like logs of wood. And here we are again this morning, starting this new day in His name. Praise God. Hallelujah. My dear friend, let's not take it for granted. It is not for something we did or we didn't do. It is not for our hard work or hard carefulness, but by God's mercy. The Bible says, great is the faithfulness of the Lord, for it is of his mercy that we are not consumed. Amen. Let's not, let's not take it for granted. All we can do is have a little time right now to commit the day back into his hand. We don't know what the day holds, but he is fully in charge. Let's take permission from him. Let's hand the day over to him. Let's say, God, we can't start our day without you. Yes, the mercy is there to carry us through the day. The grace is there to carry us through the day, but we have to play our own part. We have to acknowledge. We have to recognize that he is the one in charge. Not, we are not in charge. We may have our beautiful plans, but the truth is that we're not in charge. So with that mind, I want us to Put ourselves together. If there's someone beside you, if there's someone within your environment that is still sleeping, wake them up. Wake him up, wake her up. Let her not miss the morning's refreshment, the, the morning's, you know, preparation to start a new day. A divine preparation with the Almighty. We can't do without him. We can't do without his mercy. Wake that lady up, wake that man up. That neighbor, wake, wake them up. Let's all worship together. Let's all start the day, obtain permission from our Heavenly Father. Receive grace to carry through today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. We are going to be looking at, uh, for this morning devotion, I want us to look at a topic that says, His eyes are on you. You. I'm talking about you. His eyes are on you. His, eye, uh, his eyes are on all of us. Every one of us. But before we go into this, uh, this uh, uh, short exhortation, I want us to sing a, a, a hymn. I want us to sing a hymn. The hymn says, Lord, your word abides. It says, Lord, thy word abideth. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to be singing. Uh, if you know it, let's sing it together. If you don't know it, just listen and the words will bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, thy word abide and our footsteps guide us. Who is truth believe it. Light and joy receive it. Who can tell the pleasure? Who recounts the treasure by thy word imparted? And Simple hearted when I fall near and dark clouds before us, then it's light directed and I will protect. Who can tell the pleasure who recount the treasure by thy word imparted to the simple hearted? Word of mercy giving help unto the living, word of life supplying comfort to the dying. Oh, 
that we descend in its most holy learning, love, bear, love, and fear thee evermore be near thee. Holy Spirit, we hand over to you. We ask that you speak to us. Speak that word that will guide our feet today. Speak that word that will light our path today. Speak that word that will be a support to us today. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Like I said at the beginning, we are going to look at a topic briefly, just an exhortation to help us pray this morning. That says, His eyes are on you. His eyes are on you. Wherever you are, the eyes of the Lord are on you. We're going to be taking our text from Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 16. We're going to read from verse 7 through to verse 9. And at that time, Hanani the seer came to Asa king of Judah and said to him, Because you have relied on the king of Syria and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. With the Ethiopians and the Libyan, not a huge army, with very many chariots and horsemen yet, because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro through the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you shall have wars. Oh my goodness. That is the word of God. People of God, the portion we just read now, Second Chronicles chapter 16, reading from verse 7 through 9, is a, a brief story of what happened to King Asa, one of the kings in Israel then. What was his offense? That he did not rely on God. He did not rely totally on God. He relied on something else. He relied on a name he thought that was big. He relied on what he thought he knew. He didn't rely on God. God wants us to rely on him in everything. We cannot say, oh, because my car is very reliable, I have a brand new car. I just got my car last week. It's, it, it's brand new from the factory. Everything is okay in that car. Then you zoom off in the morning. You can say, oh, okay, I know the route to my office. This is the route I have done the past five, ten years. So I know every nook and cranny of that route. I know every gully. I know every bad spot there. I know this. I know that. We can say that. But I tell you, that is unacceptable to God. In this portion, King Esau's offense was that he did not rely on God. He thought he had a friend he could rely on. He thought he knew someone that, oh, this man is very strong. This king is very powerful. He's my friend. Oh, I can look up to him. He knows what strings to pull and things will get working for me. Hey, the Bible says that God said, because... Let me read that portion again in case you didn't hear it good. It says, Because you have relied on King Syria, on King of Syria, and have not relied on the Lord your God. Simple, very straightforward. Because you relied on a fellow human being. Because you relied on what he thought he could count on physical thing he was seeing. He was careless, that careless. Meanwhile, the very next verse tells us of how God had delivered him from other two powerful kingdoms or kings. God, he did, who did it before, was still able to do it again. But somehow, for whatever reason, King Asa began to look up to man. He didn't look up to God that had helped him before. And that 
really anoint God. And it's the same God. God has helped us many times over. He has been there for us. He has delivered us so many times. Yet when little things happen, we think, oh, God is not able to help me. Let me find a way to help myself. And there's this popular uh, saying that says, heaven helps those who help themselves. I don't know where that came from, but I know it's not scriptural. So for those of us who think, okay, uh, this is something I've done many times. Oh, this road, they just finished working on it. It's so smooth. It's okay. It's very straightforward. Just keep going down the road all the way. In 10 minutes, you're going to be there. You can drive this car. It's reliably strong. There's gas. The, the tank is filled up and all that. <laughs> the Bible says that because King Asa relied on the king of Syria, that was his offense. He did not steal. He did not, he was not involved in any immoral act. He did not tell on anyone. He didn't gossip. He didn't, I don't know what I can say now. He didn't cheat. His offense was that he relied on his fellow human being. Mark it, I'm not saying that God does not use people to help people, but let's not put our trust in anything first. Let's go to God first. God decides what to do in the course of the day. We cannot start our day without God. We cannot say because, oh, this is just like any other day. It's a Monday. I know how my Wednesdays are. It's a Wednesday. It's a Thursday. I know how my Thursdays are. Just the normal thing, my normal routine. Get up in the morning. Okay, this is where I can get. Park and ride. This park and ride. Stop my car there. Jump into the... When I get there by 6 a.m. And then by the time I get there by 9.30. No. First of all, start with God. God is aware of all those things you have piled up for the day. It can only take his grace for us to carry through, for us to go through and do it well. It is not how long we've been doing it. It is not the people we know in the process. It's not how beautiful that office setting is. It's not about what we have here. It's about God's presence, God's mercy. So people leave their house in the morning, they don't get back. So they don't even get to their place, to their places of work or so the business premises, something happens on the way. Some people just go, they get there, something, all this careless shooting, all this, you know, gun violence everywhere. It is just God that keeps us from then. So it's not, um, uh, it's not uh, about, all about how careful we are on the street. Look out, be on the watch out, be careful, watch out for where there's no crime, and all that, and all that. No, it is God's mercy. That's what his word says. So we need to be careful to start our day kneeling before God. He will not lie down. He will not kneel. But it is time. It is important for us to spend some time in the morning. That's what we call morning devotion. If you're a child of God and you don't do that because you're in a hurry, let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 127. I'm going to read that together one more time. Psalm um, chapter 127. So it's time 127 verse. We're going to do two verses, verses 1 and 2. Unless the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Mm. People of God, this is not my word. This is not the pastor's word. This is not the word of the Christian group. No. Or the founding fathers of the church. Or the bishop. It is the word of God. For the people of God. He says it is a vain thing. Verse 2 says it is a vain thing for us to wake up early in the morning. Very early, jump out early. I'm going to have a long day. You just jump. Oh, it's almost. I don't want to miss the bus. I don't want to miss this. I don't want to go late at work. If you're clocking late, they're going to do this. HR, this. It's okay for HR to do their job. I'm not encouraging you to be late, but please, as a child of God, let God know that He has a place in your daily activity. Let Him know that He's part of your day. Let him know that he's welcome to direct your affairs. Let him know that you depend on him. He wants to be depended on. 
He doesn't want us to be independent of him. No. We talk about being independent, to encourage people to be independent, but hey, it is stupid. It is it is not just fair to us as human beings. It is a big, big mistake to want to be independent of God. God wants us to rely on him. He has given us the wisdom. He has given us the physical strength, everything, to do what we need to do. But he still wants us to depend on him, to direct us, to guide us. Not that he's going to drive that car for you per se physically or do your job in the office for you physically, but he gives you the grace, he gives you the wisdom too. So you need to start the day with him and tell him, Daddy, Father, I just want to bless you for this new day and I ask for the grace to do what I'm supposed to do. I ask for the wisdom to do my job well. I ask for the grace to, to tolerate whatever I'm going to see in the office today. I ask for the grace and the wisdom to overcome because the devil may want to try you through someone you never thought you know, could do something to you. It can come in any way. They want to test your faith. They want to try you. So you're a child of God. You say you're a Christian. They want to try your patience. They want to try your self-control. Except you, you, you start the day with God and say, Holy Spirit, help me. You remind him, not that he has forgotten, but he wants to have that sense of, she depends on me. He depends. He looks up to me to direct. Just like saying, seeking permission, taking permission to do something. You're in the house when you're growing up as a child. You're a child of God. You're a child as, a, as you know, to your parents when you were growing up. And you want to take that, uh, that drink from the refrigerator, you of course going to say, Mommy, can I have a soda? Uh, can I have a piece of pizza? I mean, you part of the family. The pizza actually is for everyone, or maybe for you probably. That soda is not, your mommy is not selling it, but she wants to know what is going on around her. She wants to know that the child in the house respects her. There's a, you know, there's a, 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 a chain of command. There's a chain of command in the family. The same thing between us and God. God is in charge. He wants to have that sense of, I am in their life. They recognize me as their leader. They recognize me as their father, as their owner. We cannot do anything on our, on our own. This life is not ours. It belongs to God. God can close it any time. So we cannot just keep living it as if it's ours. He it says his eyes are on us. So if his eyes are on us, we should recognize that. And also tells us that we shouldn't be afraid. It doesn't matter what is happening out there. This, this person says his eyes are on us. His eyes are everywhere. That's Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. It says, For the eyes of the Lord go to and fro the whole surface of the earth, every part of the world. The eyes of the Lord are going to show himself mighty, to show himself great on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal towards him. What is a loyal heart? A heart that depends on God, that relies on God. A, a heart that says, however God wants it. God, here, I'm always here. I'm always here listening to hear what you want to say. To do it your own way. That's loyalty. Doing it for the person's sake, the way the person wants it done. Loyalty. You're not going to say no. You're not going to do it. You're not going to be rebellious. You're not going to say no. This is how I want to do it. Loyalty simply means being sold out to someone. You commit to the person. God wants us to commit to him. That's what he wants. He's looking into our heart. And we're going to say, oh, well, I know how to navigate. I know how to run my day. I know how to deal with them in that office. When I get there, I see this, I did that, I do that, I do this. That's it. Then when you go there, then the enemy is also waiting for you. But if you say, God, by strength shall no man prevail. It is not of him that wills, not of him that runs, but you that show mercy. God, show me mercy today. Help me by your spirit. I depend on you. Wherever I am going, I am an ambassador of heaven. I am an ambassador of the Christian faith. God, I am your servant. So wherever you're sending me to, let show me how to do it. Show me how to represent you. Show me how to do the, the things the proper way. Show me how to answer them. Put the right word in my mouth, Holy Spirit. When we do that, the Holy Spirit takes over. But if we think we can do it on our own, He, let, he lets us, then we, we, we hit the day. The, the song we said, say, God, your word abides, and our foots, uh, footsteps are guided by the word of God. Whoever believes the truth of the word of God shall receive directive, shall receive joy, shall receive light. Say, light and joy receives. Whoever that believes the truth of the word of God. We need to believe the truth of the word of God so that the, 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 the word will form the light on our path and guide us. The streets out there are very slippery. The streets of life, the ways of life, they are very slippery. 
We need someone to guide. We need the hand of God, the mighty hand of God to guide us. And it's only when we say, can you help us? No, I mean, when you're on, uh, outside and you need help, you need to say, excuse me, can you help me for someone to help you? They don't impose their help on you. The same way, well, God knows that what to do. He's in charge. He has all that it takes to live you know, a successful life daily. But we need to ask him. For it is not our own, our own life. It's not our ways. It's his own ways, the way he wants it done. We can't do it by our own wisdom. Our wisdom will fail. Our strength will fail. They have failed many times. Our expertise sometimes can fail. But when God is in charge, he knows what to do every moment. God never fails. Praise God. He's mighty. He's awesome. The Bible says his ways are past finding. No, nobody can find his way. But he knows the ways of every man. The Bible said that he is perfect in all his ways. He is perfect in all his ways. So he knows how best to make us do the best thing, the right thing, for which we receive our blessing and all glory shall be returned to him. When we depend on our own wisdom, we want to say, oh, okay, we can do it. So that at the end of it, we say, I did it, I did it. But God wants to hear, oh, I thank God I was able to do it. It was by the grace of God that I did it. When you depend on God and you do it, you, you don't hastily, you know, beat your chest and say, I did it. I worked so hard. No, you always say, oh, I praise God. The little effort I put, God magnified it. The grace, I just felt the grace of God. I felt God's presence. So that when if people are saying, I cannot go this, we are not afraid because the eyes of the Lord are going to and fro. He wants to show himself mighty on your behalf. If something needs to be done, it doesn't matter the danger that seems to be there. God is there for you. If, if it has to be done. If it will glorify him, remember, it's all about him. Praise God. I want us at this time to have heard that the eyes of the Lord are going all over the earth, going to and fro, to and fro, everywhere. What, looking out for you, looking out for that moment that will shake you up, that moment that will confuse you, that moment that seems to just come upon you suddenly, that moment that will challenge your faith. That's kind of putting you through a trial. God is watching out. He won't let you fall. He won't let that moment come suddenly upon you. No way. He won't let that danger overtake you. He won't let that trap catch you. Even if you're caught in that trap, he's going to pull you out. Because that's why he said he will show himself mighty. There has to be something for him to show himself mighty about. If it's like a smooth, you know, road surface smooth, that's he wouldn't bother. But because there is something, there's going to be a mountain you know confronting you he will show himself mighty because there may be some dangers there may be some traps set out there for you against you there he will show himself mighty so whatever it is dear friend let's commit into the hands of god i want us to go to god in prayer this time let the word of god abide in us let the word of god share us let the word of god light our way let the word of god direct us in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you. I want us at this time, wherever you are, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Thank God for a new day. Thank the Almighty God for making you part of this new day. It is not for whatever you did so well. It is God's wisdom. Don't take it for granted. Don't misuse the grace for the day. Thank him. Bless his holy name. He is worthy. His word says he's worthy of our praise. Hallow his name. Give him worship. Father, we bless your name. We give you all the glory. Thank you for making us see this new day. Open your mouth and talk to God about today. What are your plans for the day? Talk to God about it. The Spirit of God is here. The Almighty Father is here. His word is here. He's hearing everything you're asking for. Talk to him. You know what you want your day to be like? You know that thing that is creating anxiety in you? That thing that has brought you so much worry? You're so concerned about that particular issue. You don't know how you're going to deal with it today. It's confronting you again to that mountain. I remember, in fact, you almost had a sleepless night last night. Talk to him about it. He's able. God is able, abundantly able, to deliver and to save. Our God is able, He's abundantly able, to deliver.
to deliver those who trust in him. God is able, is abundantly able to deliver and to save. God is able, is abundantly able to deliver those who trust in him. Yes, God is able. Put it into his hand. He's able. He's able to do more than even what you can ask or even imagine. Talk to him about it. I would say we should pray for one another. Pray for someone else, not just for yourself. Pray for that brother, that sister, that neighbor that's going through a lot of hassles. Pray for that couple you know that their marriage is getting very rocky. Pray for them. Speak to the morning. The Bible says, command the morning. Command the morning. Let the morning go. And meet them wherever they are. Start a new day for them. Come on the morning. Let the morning go out there. To people's business premises. And, and give someone a good day. Good business day. Pray for your office. Pray for your colleagues. The Spirit of God is moving here. Through this channel. Through this screen. Holy Spirit is here. To connect with us in prayer let him help you spirit of god help us i want us to to pray for the city leaders leaders of the city say pray for those in authority let's pray for the leaders in the state the governor and those that lead with him let's pray for the government of the United States of America and the government of whatever country you are from. If you are not born here, probably you came from somewhere else. On other countries of the world, let there be peace. Let us pray for those people on the streets who are homeless. You and I, we slept in the comfort of our beds. There's someone slept outside in an old car. Someone slept by the roadside with no covering, with no, nothing to cover. They did enjoy the night's sleep like we did. Pray for that person. Pray for that particular person that has been believing God for a job. The person's rents are owing. In fact, somebody may have been evacuated from their house. They may have been asked to go to leave. Ask that God will open a door in the name of Jesus. I give you praise, Abba Father. Thank you. Summarize your prayer. Ask God to help you today. Father, we bless your name. I give you praise. Your prayer answering God. That need that is causing someone sleepless night, Father, we hand it over to you today. You ask for a miracle. We pray as we go out today, we go with your presence. Help us, Father. In the name of Jesus, let your presence go with us. Amen.